Welcome back. I'm Pete, and you're watching the Custom Car Channel. So we're gonna work out a Bobcat today. And it's gonna be awesome. So this one's the Silverado. Maybe you guys can just call me the, the Silverado Man. Hey guys, uh, got a 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. Uh, customer states a uh, leaking brake fluid. So I just brought it in, and I just set the racks. I I haven't I did open the hood, but we'll see. Uh, I haven't looked at anything underneath, so I just thought I'd bring you guys along through the whole process. And it it does look like I'm gonna be able to lift the car up. I mean, some of these are pretty rusted out. But as far as I got, it's I just opened up the hood. And I found out that this happens. But anyways, I got a little tool for that. But, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong yet, and we're going to find out. So there is some brake fluid in there. The customer did say that he filled it up on his way over here. So, let's lift it up and see what we find. All right, guys. I, I think I found it. I did set up some lights. Uh, I see that it's gonna. We're gonna have to do both of these rear lines. So right up here, I'm gonna have to determine which one is exactly leaking. But it looks like it's the one that runs over to the to the right hand side. So, but the other the other one here for the left hand is not looking pretty. So, all right, right up there. So, and I also noticed that the parking brake cable is just kind of hanging here. So, I don't know if that's something you want to fix, but we're not going to fix that today. We're just going to get the brake fluid so it don't leak, and I got another car coming in. So, right now, I want to just try to determine, if it's possible, which one of those lines is leaking. So, I think the first thing that I would do, since I'm here by myself... So I'm just going to spray it down, and dry it off, and see if I can see it. Yeah, that can's empty. So, I think if I just wipe all this off now, you know, the fuel filter bracket is buff. Uh, that's kind of rusted off. Okay. Yeah, so I just spent all morning... Well, not, not all morning, but I, I did my intro, my new intro. I think that's pretty cool. And I also helped the guy out. He uh, he got most of his brakes put in on his truck. He, he just needed the, the right rear. So I put some brake pads in his truck, and then he told me he didn't put the clip on the other side. So we took the other side apart and put a clip in it, and I got him on his way. And then after this one, I got another, another brake job to do. So, yeah, I think it needs a new fill filter, but, you know, um, that bracket, I'm not too worried about it right now. This car's getting pretty old, so, you know, we almost got to move that a little bit to get to this line. Yeah, so there's, there's some brackets up there. That's usually where they leak. And I can see... Well, maybe I can't see, but... So it appears to be leaking at the bracket on top of the fuel filter. But I'm not 100% sure which line it is yet. So I think... Like, I would like to maybe take this bracket off and... I'm not sure what the best course of action is. And, and then we're gonna have another problem here too. So if these don't loosen up, then I got then I gotta run these lines all the way up. 
and it looks like they go all the way up to the master cylinder, and then there are some braided lines there. that's part of them. So, yeah, so if I got those, I'd, I'd want to order the whole line. I wouldn't want to make those. But these two lines back here, we're going to replace. I'm pretty sure I can get that apart up there. So I'm still determining where exactly it's leaking. I think I'm going to take some of this apart. I'm just going to start taking this stuff apart, I guess. So I think I'm, I'm going to try to crack these loose without uh, you know, breaking that side. We'll see how that goes. So it looks like it must be 12. So, so apparently that's a 12 millimeter. And I got to get a 13. Alright, so that's a 13 on that one. And, and this side here is reversed, I believe. So, yeah. I don't know. They must not want you to get it mixed up or something. So, 13. And this is a 12. I'm just going to try some wrenches before I get a line wrench out. And it's kind of rusty. I'm having a little bit of trouble. She wants to fight me just a little bit. That's okay. Alright. Yeah, I kind of went off to the side a little bit. So I do want to make sure my wrench is on there all the way. And it's a little bit far apart. Something came loose here, so it did come loose, and it, it wasn't that tight. So I think what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go up there and put. Uh, hopefully, I'm gonna press the pedal down a little bit, and hopefully, brake fluid don't go on my camera. So I'm gonna move my camera. I'm gonna go up there and press the pedal halfway down, and hopefully, brake fluid won't drain out of the master cylinder, all of it. All right, guys, uh, I do see it's the line. Now you guys can't see, but it's the line that runs to the passenger side or the right rear. But the other side for this left rear is really bad, too. So just one thing, and I already tried this. I guess I didn't turn the camera on, but you want to make sure you can loosen your bleeders on both sides if you're going to. Before you order the parts, because if you can't loosen them bleeders or they break off, you're either going to have to drill them out or um, replace the caliper. So I did that, and uh, I'm, I believe this car's got bubble flares back here, but that's what I'm going to do next. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to uncouple that line and see if that's a bubble flare, which I think it is. Which one did I loosen? This one. So, it's not loosen the nut. I would like to loosen that nut. So I haven't called them with the estimate yet, so I'm sure they're gonna do it, but you never know. So I'm just gonna tap on it a little bit. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to break it loose. So I guess what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut it, and uh, we'll just unscrew it. And I did. It, I twisted it off. Yeah, so that, that's a bubble flare. So um, I knew it was. And I think, I think the, the, the driver's side wheel is going to take like a 30. And then the, the passenger side wheel, I'm going to need like a 65. 
All right, so I'm over here now. So I, I just thought I'd, I'd loosen this one too. So I got my wrench on there. And it looks like I gotta hold it, so I'm gonna use the channel locks. I'm just gonna go right up here if I can, a little bit bigger. That's gonna grab that whole bracket. I think I'm gonna need a line wrench. And you know, if you don't have a line wrench, you can cut the line off and use a socket. Which, that might be what we have to do, too. Holy smokes, that, that is tight. So yeah, it's probably a good idea. Maybe we might have to get a brake hose. I don't think so, but we want to find out all the parts that we need before we order them. And then write up an estimate. All right, let's get to try the big vice grip. All right, I got it broke loose, but I can guarantee you that's. The line's not going to break loose there, so I am going to cut that one also. So that's the problem. Well, you don't want to do what I just did and use a vice grip on it because now you can't get a wrench on it. So this is what I should have done the first time is just cut the line and put a socket on it. Usually they come right out, but this car, they're not. This is also a bubble flare. Alright, I'm, I'm going to order some lines and then we're going to take these lines out and get ready. Alright guys, I'm back. I, I just called O'Reilly's and they can't give me numbers on the phone, so so I can put them on my work order so I have to drive over there so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off and you guys can watch but I gotta pull these off so I can drive over to Raleigh's because they they don't know what the uh, bubble flare 316 line is they just don't know so I gotta drive over there I, I wanted to put them on the invoice so I can just order it and that way they're on my my computer they said no that's really weird how do you not know what a bubble flare 316 brake line is? All right, let's uh, I'm gonna pull these lines off quick and see if I can see how long they are and be more precise and get everything that I need. So let's go, let's get at it. All right, so we already started on that one. Let's get it, see if we can get it pulled out of there, whatever I gotta do. So I got it, I cut it up here. So there is where this fuel filter goes in there. There's a bracket there. I'm having a little bit of trouble with that one. All right, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one off here, and I'm gonna take these two bolts out here so I can swing this stuff over this way. Because the return fuel line is in that bracket, and I it is a little rusty, but I don't want to break it. I'm not fixing that today. I mean, I got, I got some stuff I'm going to be recommending for these, for this customer. But today, I just want to fix this brake line and get on to my next vehicle. That, that's one of the things I like to do. I like to roll the vehicles. I don't like to keep them here forever. I like to do, like, one job at a time. All right, 
that came right loose. I'm gonna do the same thing. So they are in order up here, so this one goes to that side, that one goes to that side, so we can't mix it up. And especially since I'm doing a video on it, it it'd be impossible to mix it up. You would think. So I'm going to go ahead and find a cap for that, because like I said, I pushed the pedal halfway down and she's leaking out. Moving on, moving on. All right, so we got both of these disconnected. I'm gonna go pop them two little 10 millimeters out. We'll have some more repair to do there. One, one of them came out. Okay, slide this down. Now I'm gonna get a, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to try to pop them out of that holder. So there's one. All right, let's let's just move on. We'll get them both out of there. I think this one does go in some holders up here encapsulated holders so right up in there is so hard to see but I'm gonna try to get them out you know what you know what would work good as a pick I'm just gonna reach up there and try to unlock that holder no luck so far I got it unlocked all right there's there's one holder, and I believe there's going to be one on the seller side, too. Yep, there's another one, and I believe that one is going to be harder to get off. Sure is. But we can do it, right? i got to go right through here. That might be kind of a trick to get them back in there. Alright, there it is. Now I'm just going to cut this line right at the nut. So I already cut the line, and I didn't bring you guys along. And that's too tight, to, I have to hold it. And this is what I found that works the best, just grab it with a channel lock. And there we are. So here's this line. Got to get as straight as we can. So I'm going to need. 60 and a 15 probably. This other line I need a 32 or a 35. Alright, you guys want to go to O'Reilly's? I know I don't, but let's get going. Alright guys, we're headed to O'Reilly's. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of snow on my F-150. But, hey, that, that's all right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I just can't believe uh, Riley's couldn't get me the, give me the part numbers over the phone so I could put them in my work order. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what else is up, but I stopped at the gas station to get a sandwich, and uh, there's nothing. No pizza, no sandwiches. That my video's kind of blah today. It started out really, really blah. So it must be just a blah Saturday. That's all I have to say. Uh, 
I was thinking about I should get a new camera, but I'm not sure what kind of camera to get. I mean, I wish somebody could tell me what they use and if it's any good or not. I think I'm going to have to pass this guy. I'm not sure, but I think that's just about the way it is. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with my intro. I spent I spent like three hours on it this morning, and you know I've been thinking about it for for a week or so now. And some of my viewers are like, "You you need to get an intro." So I think I did it. I think that's awesome. The only thing is, uh, every so often we got to make a new one. So. But we'll have some we'll have some footage, more footage. It's a nice little Colorado. Yep, we made it to O'Reilly's and they're still open. I think they might be open to eight. All right, guys, we're back from O'Reilly's. We had to pick out our own brake lines, but anyways, whatever. So I, I think I want to get a move on this because uh, the little caps I put on there are, are dripping, and I don't want that master cylinder run dry. So I think let's get at it. So I'm gonna start with the 60 inch. I'm gonna run it through here and hook it to that wheel, and then we'll put a little extension right here. And I might be a little longer than what we need, but. What can I do? Anyways, I'm just trying to get. Why do they do that? And can't they? Can't they put the sticker on? So on the other side of the nut, can't they do that? I got it. So what I want to do? So I want to put a little piece of tape on here, so when I feed it through, we don't get no dirt in there. Plus, plus it might keep the nut on this end. So when I feed it through, it might try to push the nut away. I'm just going to start feeding it through. And it does go underneath the gas hose. So we're gonna, I'm going to have to start bending it a little bit. And it's stuck. I got it. All right, so now I got it kind of through there. So I'm going to start by first hooking it up to where it goes. And then I'm going to bend it for each of those little brackets right here. And then we'll bend it that way and put in my extension piece. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this one right up. That's good. So now there's a bracket right up here, so we got to try to get that back in. And I can't hardly even see that bracket. I think I'm pretty close. I'm really close. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got it right in the bracket. Just like factory. So now, now we just want to bend her a little bit right here. And we want to get ready to go into this other bracket. And she is very close to that one already. I, I can't get a good angle to show you guys, so... You're just going to have to believe me. Actually, it's popped already in. I don't have to do it. I just, I just have to latch it over. Yep, 
and I just can't get my hand up there. I can't believe it. It just lined up to that bracket. All I had to do was latch it over. I've never had that happen before. All right, so now we'll just make a little bend around here. Yep, we're all good. Now I'll bend upward. And now we'll put a coupler on there. We'll get the other little extension piece and I'll take the little tag off. To... So yeah, I don't know, why, do, why don't they put the knot here so I don't have to take this off? Or I could just rip the end off like I did. Now I have to peel it off. and I think I know what we should do. We should invent a tool to take these stickers off. I think the Napa ones are really bad. You cannot, it takes forever to get them off the line. And you know, if you're using a razor blade or something, you don't want to nick this. It's got a coating on there. And I have no experience with the Riley lines, but the Napa ones, the darker colored line, the steel ones, they won't rust out unless you knock the coating off. At least that's in my experience. Alright, finally got that off there. I screw it on here. And we're really close, so I got a 60 inch and a 15. Yeah, that's, I think that's going to work just fine. So we do want to get it on the other side of this because it's got to go up there. So we need to bend about right here. And this line I think goes all the way to the top. Okay. And then... Something. It's just, it's like one inch too long. So I think we'll put a weird bend in it right here. And then we'll kind of loop it. And we'll try to been there. I think we're about right on the money now. So this line is we'll need the other union. That's why I get her connected and then I'll, I'll fine tune the bend. Okay, so I gotta pull it down. I forgot to tighten that. I was just trying to get everything lined up. We need to tighten that. Just wonder what size these unions are. 13 are they? So I, I get them about as tight as you can get them. With wrenches on the open end, without rounding it off. So somewhere in there. Okay, now. We'll put it back in this top of this holder. like so just like so we just have one more union to tighten up there and put the other line in we're moving right along so I need to tighten the union into this line first because I have fitting is not loose 
So something like that, we got to be a little careful. So there we go. We are looking really good. And if you're not happy about the lighting, I don't care. Okay, one more line. This line, they didn't have like a 32, they had a 40. So, not happy about that either. But, it'll be okay. I promise. Alright, so we can go ahead, we can make a 90 right here. And then we can... Yeah, we're going to be about, so I'm going to run it backwards a ways. Yeah, so I'm going to start by making our bends here. So we need a short 90. Then we need another short 90. And we need to straighten it. And it needs a slight bend. And it's going to need to be bent right here. All right, I think I got it good enough. We can start putting it in. So we do want a little bend right here. Something like that. I'm going to go ahead and put it on here. And I will always make sure I can screw them in with my fingers before I tighten them. So go ahead and get this tight. Now I want, that's tight, so now I want to do whatever bending I got to do up here. And then I'll go ahead and put it into the bracket. I'll just leave that one loose until I get her bent to where I want her up here. It's in the holder there. We need a little more bend here. I think we're looking really good. Yep, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up and I'm going to finish uh, making sure everything is kosher. And we'll get ready to bleed the brakes. <clears throat> That's tight enough. Now I'm just going to Make sure that everything looks really nice. And I popped it out. And I got her back in there. I just don't like, I need to go up a little bit with this. Just like that. That'll be perfect. And now let's check up here. There. Everything's real nice. So now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that bolt back in. self-tapper for this one because remember we broke that off just like me so now I'm gonna get ready 
I'm an, I actually, I, we should spray this off with some brake clean. Anywhere we got brake fluid. Just like that. We'll let her dry off. I'm going to go fill up the reservoir and then I'm going to come back here and we're going we're gonna to gravity bleed these out. Maybe even use the vacuum bleeder. And then before we're done, we're going to fluid film some of this. So I think I'm also going to take the brake pedal depressor off. So good news is the reservoir was just down just a little bit. There was plenty in there. So I topped it off. So since these... Uh, the bleeders are inside the wheels pretty good on this car. I'm going to use my vacuum bleeder. So I'll go ahead and get my 10 millimeter wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the wrench on there first. Like right there so I can move it that way. And I'm going to put my vacuum bleeder on there. And these work really good. And I think I like Harbor Freight. They're really cheap. And I use this tool couple times a week maybe more you can use it for pulling down vacuum on anything or bleeding brakes it's just great and I got I put a little clear hose on here so I could see any air or bubbles or anything like that so now I got that on there I'm gonna go ahead and draw a vacuum and then I'm gonna crack this open So I think I need a shorter wrench. So I'm going to go get a shorter wrench. I'll be right back. We got a shorter wrench. And we're going to start this show over. So again, I'll go ahead and draw a vacuum, and I'll open that bleeder. I'll continue to pump it. And she's kind of slow going, we must be pulling some vacuum around the threads of the bleeder. Sometimes you can play around with the bleeder a little bit, make it suck better. I'm just going to set this up here. I'm just going to move that light so you guys have better lighting. I, I'm just not very good with the light. All right, let's, let's continue on. So I, I'd like to get a half a cup out of here. That's what I would like to do. And the brake fluid that's in this car doesn't look the greatest for having a brake line leak back here because it should be better. They've been putting brake fluid in this car. Usually it works a lot better than this, just we're pulling some vacuum around the threads. So I, I don't know if there's an ABS bleed on this car. But if the pedal feels good, I'm not going to worry about it. And it sounds like there's a storm rolling in. The, the wind is picking up pretty good out there. Leaves are blowing around. Not looking forward to any snow, I'll tell you that. So I did, I just put a little, I had the bleeder open, but I put a down, a little downward pressure on the wrench. And that sealed up these threads better. It's so weird why my camera keeps shutting off. I needed a new camera so badly. So again, I'm, I'm just putting a little downward pressure on my wrench, and I mean, the bleeder's open, so it's loose, but I mean, I'm pushing downward on the wrench. 
and that that's making the little the bleeder a little tighter on the threads. So that's working. I think once I get about a half cup, I'm gonna stop, and then I'll go up and check the fluid level. So I guess I could unhook this uh, vacuum pump when I go up there, and we can see if we can let it gravity bleed a little bit. And that brake fluid is, I don't know if you can see that, that that's pretty nasty. Okay, so I'll let the pressure off, and I'll unhook it here. That, that is one important thing, you don't want to get no brake fluid in this part of the tool. So we'll just set this up here. And it, and it should it should gravity bleed. These cars usually do pretty good. I'm gonna go up there, check the fluid, and top it off. So it, it is gravity bleeding. I can see it, the dirt drips going into the cup there. You can see it dripping. So we'll just let it do that just for a minute, a couple minutes. And that'll completely ensure us that we got all the air out of this side. And, and you always want to start with the furthest away tire from the master cylinder. I mean, I've done it differently and I've never had a bad result, but that's what they say. So that's what I do. And it looks like we're flushing the brake fluid out on this wheel. So they're not going to need a brake flush anymore. Maybe on the front. So another thing we could do is we can close her up here a minute, and then we can just uh, we can just tap on that a little bit, just like that. If there's any little air bubbles in there, they'll come out now. And nope, there's no air in there. So I'm calling this side good. Let's go ahead and do the other side. And we'll pull our thing off, our hose, and we'll put the little cap back on, and we did not spill any brake fluid yet. Alright, that side went really well. Let's see if we can do this other one. So I'm just going to dump out this container. Okay, so what I want to do is I already have the cap off because I, I tried... I made sure they would loosen. So I'll put my wrench on there and I'm going to put the wrench way up high. Like so. Then I'm going to put the hose on for my bleeder cup. Like so. And I'm going to go ahead now. Draw vacuum again. And then if I can get my hand up here, we'll, we'll crack that bleeder. And now I'm going to put a little downward pressure on the bleeder. That seems to work. So that's exactly what we need to do. And I'll just keep the pressure up, try to go open more if I can. And I'd like to get a half cup out of this wheel. Also, so I've I've been bleeding brakes a long time, and ever since I bought this tool, I've been using this tool, and I'm a lot of the times I got to do it by myself, like just like today, right now. So, back in the day, I mean, or a lot of people, it takes somebody to pump the pedal and somebody to open the bleeder. But I've always had good luck doing it by myself. And I, this tool did save me because I did a I did a Duramax that needed a I don't know what year it was. It's pretty old. I put all the brake lines on it, and I couldn't do an ABS bleed on it because it has codes. So if you have ABS codes, it will not. You cannot do an ABS automated bleed. So I use this tool on there. Many times on each wheel, and it's at the end. I got it. I got all the air out. Yeah, 
And I'll tell you something else. Uh, one time at work, we bled, we gravity bled, or one time at work, we replaced a, a brake line in the back of this vehicle. I can't remember what kind it was. I think it was a Ford. But anyways, we bled all the wheels. We did automated bleeds. We bled all the wheels again many, many times. We ran a couple gallons of brake fluid through it, but we could never get a good pedal. So I'm like, well, let's just crack the lines at the master cylinder, and we did. And there was just tons of air there. So that's just another thing to put in the memory bank if you ever have trouble. And when, when I drove the car into the shop, the, the pedal felt fine to me, so I don't think there's much air in the system. Yeah, you can see that, that green brake fluid, so. They say that the inside of the lines are have a copper coating. When, you, when, when copper oxidizes, it turns green, so. And to oxidize, you know, you probably have water or moisture or in your lines. But that's what they say. I just think it's crap brake fluid myself. Alright, so I'm happy with that. And again, I'm going to let this one gravity bleed after I release this pressure. So maybe I could set that up here again so we can see it. Gravity bleed. I don't know. Yep, she's dripping in there. And the light wants to flicker now a little bit. So we'll just let a gravity bleed. I don't think I'm going to close the bleeder on this one. I'm just going to give it a little tap while it's gravity bleeding. And I don't see no little bubbles coming out. We'll just give it another minute. I mean, a lot of the times I've I've just gravity bled them. I mean, many times, not. Maybe that's a lot. Probably is. But sometimes I, I used to just gravity bleed them. And another thing what I'll do sometimes too is I'll go up there and pump the pedal and then bleed them again. But it all depends on whether I feel the pedal's good or not. You know, what's up with the light? Hmm. So I, I think that's really good now, so I'm going to close this one. Pull the hose. Set it in the oil drain. And I'm going to reposition the wrench because I, I don't think it's tight enough. There we go. And now I'm going to put the little cap on. And we don't have any brake fluid to clean up at the wheels, and that's good. Brake fluid is bad for paint and stuff like that. So now that all the brake clean I put on here is dried off, I'm going to give her some fluid film. Anywhere where I think something might rust out, I want to spray this on there. All right, I think that's going to do it for under here. Uh, let's uh, let it down. We'll make sure the master cylinder ain't too full because these brakes on this car are like half. So your master cylinder should be down just a little bit. Actually, before I take the hoist arms out, I'm just going to make sure that that's got a pretty good fluid on it. And I'm going to go in there and step on the brake pedal a couple times. I'll put the cap on so it don't squirt out. And then I'll adjust the level for, you know, 50% brakes. So, 
So I did a go press the brake pedal, and the brakes feel perfect. They're like real nice and hard. So now we just want this just a little bit down because if somebody puts brake pads in there and they push the cal or the pistons back in the calipers, it'll squeeze the fluid right out of here, and make a big mess. So we're about three quarters of an inch down. That's where I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to put my light on it to make sure. Yeah, we're, we're fine. So, pretty easy do-it-yourselfer job, and we went right to O'Reilly's and picked out some brake lines, and yeah, it's nothing to it. So, yeah, if you need, got a brake leak in your 2004 uh, Pontiac Grand Prix, pretty easy job to fix. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching, and you can catch me next time.